So, well, good morning. I'm Sherry Teachout, and I'm better known as Mrs. T because with two Sherrys running around, it gets really confusing. And and so, um, and I get blamed for a lot of stuff that Sherry Grover does. But <laughs> but anyway, um, it was such a pleasure to be here this week. And yes, we did a drama skit, and these these people in the drama were just a dream team for me. And put in Jillian back there on our. Um, doing all our slides and sound, it was just such a joy. So we are going to begin. So we had a lot of trouble this week because these guys, Bezalel and Eliezer, are always late. So I'm trying to start, and I'm waiting and waiting and waiting, and we're off time, and they just never show up. So uh, let's see they can see. Shalom, Mrs. T. Better late than never, as always. Shalom, Mrs. T. Wow. How's it going? It's going good. Look. Do you see all these people praising our great God today? Yes. Isn't that awesome to see so many gathered together in worship? Yes. Yeah. It is amazing watching like so many people gather together worshiping our Lord God. It's just the greatest. Hey, Eliezer, would now be a good time for you to share with me your super exciting, great amazing, incredible news. That would be an awesome time to share with you my great, amazing, incredible news because you're not going anywhere today. No, I'm not. <laughs> but if things continue as they have, then Zilp will be interrupting us any minute. Right. She's always Did I hear right my name? <gasps> Zilp. Right on cue. Did you guys hear my name? Did they yes, say my name? Because oh. I think I heard my name. Shalom, Zilpa. Hi. Shalom, Zilpa. saying my name. Hi! Hi, Zilpa. Yeah, I do. But today I was walking. Yeah. <laughs> so, Zilpa. Oh, yeah, I do. So, Sorry. Zilpa, what can we help you with today? Nothing. I just wanted to come here to thank God and my amazing new friends for a wonderful week at VBS. I have learned so Well, that's wonderful, Zilpa. So, tell us some of the things that you learned. Ah, uh, well, maybe Mrs. T and the kids could help me out some. Can we help with the Bible truths? Remember the Bible truths we learned? Would you, would you help us out with that? That'd be great. All right, go ahead, Zilpa. Okay, so, on Monday, you guys remember that I lost my little lamb, Maria. But... I learned that God loves us even more than I love my little lamb. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. I also learned that Ready? We have our Jesus is the righteous one who desires to dwell with man. And that's man and woman and all mankind, human, right? Yeah. Right, all of us. Okay, so then on Tuesday, I took my sister's mirror without asking, and oh. so that was really bad. I accidentally broke it, and so that was horrible, and I felt really bad, and then... I had to ask God and my sister to forgive me, which was really hard. But some good did come out of it. I was able to learn that Jesus, Jesus is the, the cleansing, cleansing one. one. We, we can, can be made clean through his sacrifice, sacrifice on the cross. cross. That's right. We have to sacrifice lambs as a sin offering here in the tabernacle. But... Jesus is the true Lamb of God. He died once to wash away all sin. After Jesus, no more sacrifices were needed. That's right. Oh, yeah, and thanks again, Bezalel, for helping me talk to my sister. Uh, it was kind of scary, and I would not have been able to do it without your help. Well, you're very welcome, Zilpha. Nice move, buddy. <laughs> but let me guess, that ties in with what we learned on Wednesday. That's right! Okay, I'm going to need help with the motions because I never learned them. 
So, on Wednesday, I learned that Jesus is the strong one. We can depend on him to help us. Oh, yeah. We're in the same boat then. I'll teach you later, Sydney. It is so great that we serve a mighty God whom we can depend on. He is worthy of our trust. So, what happened Thursday? Well, on Thursday, my little brother, Benjamin, gave me this nasty jar of manna. You can't take more than enough for one day, otherwise it gets all gross and yucky. It was really smelly, right? It was smelly. Yeah. Remember that manna? Oh, yeah. Smelled yeah. like my aunt's old socks. Oh. Yeah, Sorry, it did. Man. But I don't know your aunt, so yeah. I don't know if you sure. You don't want to know her. Socks. Yeah. So, anyway, while we were talking, I really didn't want to forgive him, but while we were talking, I learned that Jesus, Jesus is, is the light of, of the, the world, world and the bread of life, and, life and, and the way to God in prayer. Oh, you guys are so good. That's a great truth to remember. God provides us with manna in the wilderness, but Jesus is the true bread from heaven that fills all our needs, not just the ones in our stomachs. And He's the light that guides us. A lot like the pillar of cloud and fire guides us Israelites in the wilderness. And he is the true high priest. He lives to intercede. That means to pray for us. Oh, wow, he's a lot of things, isn't he? Oh, yeah. Gosh. So on Friday, I was really worried because I learned that Moses had disobeyed God by striking the rock twice instead of just speaking to it. So he wouldn't be able to lead us into the promised land. I was worried that if Moses wasn't going to be with us, God wouldn't be with us either. But I was able to learn that Jesus, Jesus is the present one. one. He and he is with us all the time. So, um, I have an idea. Mm -hmm. Would you like to show the families about the rock and how the water came forth when he struck it twice because they were whining, whining about it because God had not provided water and they got their provision. Do you want to do it? Oh, okay, yay. but the problem is we don't have a staff. Oh, a staff. I know where one is. Oh, okay, okay, I left a stick there right. last time. Okay. I got a stick. All right. Okay. So... Show us how Moses struck it. Ready? Okay. Okay, got so, be quiet for the big moment. Moses was supposed to speak to it like, hey there, rock open, give me give us water. But he went like pow! Pow! Speaking of Moses, do you think if we called that Moses would come and be with us today? Yeah. Let's give it a try. Ready? I'm going to say three. One, two, throw up. That's not a nice trick. Well, oh, I think we need to work on that. Maybe we should call him again. Jacqueline? Jacqueline? Ready? Ready? One, you gotta listen. I'm tricky. One, two, three. Moses! Moses! Moses. Did I hear my name? Oh, shalom, everybody. Hi there. Good to see you all. That is so nice. Like what you did with the staff over there. Yeah, it's a big stick. Yes. Yeah, mine was bigger, but 40 years in the wilderness, it wears down, you know. Maybe you need a new one. Could you go to Fred Meyer and get one? Oh. I wait for the second Tuesday of the month, then it's a senior citizen discount. Oh, on sale, I 
see, I like the way you think. But what if you didn't have to spend any money and you took this one instead? For me? It's a good stick. Cool. I like it. It's smooth, feels good. That was not my proudest moment, by the way. Oh, I was yeah. a little upset. I got some problems because of that. I will not be needing this much longer. <laughs> but uh, thank you. Yeah. Good to see you all. And it is so good that we have a God who is always with us, who is teaching us, who is guiding us, who provides for us. Yeah. <laughs> but as I said, I will not be needing this much longer because I am getting old and I am... Someday I get to go to be with God the Father forever in heaven and that will be wonderful to dwell with him face to face. And while I am gone, he has been preparing Joshua for many years to take over for me. Joshua will lead you into the promised land and take over and lead you people when you are in the promised land. Right now, he is out recruiting spies to go check out the land before they go in. Oh, so he is not here. Important job. Yes. Get those spies in place. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some of you may have seen him this week. He was working there helping you make little tabernacles and stuff. He's a good guy, but he'll be back sometime. So just pray for him that he does not get, like, in trouble. Well, I know Philippa was really worried because she didn't know who was going to take over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're not going to be there, then who's going to lead us to the promised land? Like, you won't be there, and I'm going to be so scared, and, like, what are we going to do, you know? What, who's going to lead us? Do you know who's going to lead us? Because I don't know who's going to lead okay. us. Do you guys know who's going to lead us? You talk too much. I'll be quiet now. Um, that's really funny coming from you, so just saying. <laughs> but do you know who's going to lead us? Joshua. Joshua. Joshua will lead you, but then Aaron, that's another story, because he's not going to be here forever either, but I think Eleazar can explain that better than I. Uh, that's true, I, I can. You see, God gave Aaron priesthood to, his descent, to himself and his descendants. That means his children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren and so on. And as his oldest living son, that means I get to be high priest after him. <gasps> wow. So is that the incredible, super great, exciting, awesome, jaw-dropping news you've been trying to share all week? No. <laughs> but it is related you see, my super awesome, amazing, good, amazing, urgent news I was trying to share with you uh, Monday, but we kept getting Ill interrupted, and you kept running away. But, yeah. but you see, my awesome news is not actually about me. It's about my son, Phineas. Whoa, whoa, Phineas? Phineas. Who's Phineas? Is he related to Billie Eilish? Yeah, it's just like the, yeah. yeah. Do they call him, like, yeah. Finn, Finn for short? Is there, like, a cartoon about Finn? Phineas and... Is that the Phineas? No. Phineas and Ferb. Phineas and So we haven't met Phineas. No. Okay. You, Phineas, you know, he likes working behind the scenes a little bit, so you don't, yeah. you don't see him very often, if at all. But there was this rebellion recently, and it was, it was not good. Oh, no! <gasps> Hold on just a moment. <clears throat> we have some slow people in the back. <laughs> okay, here's how it works. When we say, oh no, you go, <gasps> When we say, mean guy, you go, <gasps> When we say, and there was much rejoicing, you go, yeah. Yeah. You got it? Yeah. All right. Carry on. Okay, so I'll start from the beginning again. So, there was this rebellion, and it was not good. Oh no! <gasps> it was led by this guy named Cora. He was a mean guy. But because of my son Phineas' response to that rebellion, God, God gave him the priesthood after me, which is a huge honor. And there was much rejoicing. Yeah. The end. <laughs> so... We see that God has been preparing people to fulfill what he wants for his will for his people. And so 
He calls us out of Egypt, out of slavery, to be his people. And he gives us the tabernacle, which means dwelling place, that he may dwell with us, his people. And that tabernacle foreshadows the temple where God is with us, ultimately foreshadowing where God comes with us to be born and live with us as Jesus, his son. And then Jesus ascends to heaven, and the Holy Spirit lives within us. And God can always be with us. What a great, amazing, super, fantastic, wonderful, what was the word? News. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and there was much rejoicing. Yeah. 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 You know what? Such a God is worthy of our worship. So let's sing some songs. Yeah. Boys and girls, can you come on up here? And Mrs. T is going to lead you in some music. So come on up here, boys and girls. Right now, Ginny is going to share uh, a little bit about some of the teaching uh, that was going on. Yes, yes. So I'm Ginny, and this week I was playing Miriam. Um, I was one of two Miriams. Tamara Brown over here was also Miriam. So I did three of the groups, and she did three of the groups. Um, and this is Lillianne, and she's three weeks old. Um, but, but by God's grace, and because God called us, called me, um, we, had a, we had a great week, um, and God, God provides strength, and uh, all I needed to get through the week. And so for that, I give him thanks and praise. Um, so, boys and girls, I'm going to need your help as we go through the tabernacle. And I believe we have pictures, but if they don't come up, we're just going to have to do it from our memory. Oh, yay! So, this is a picture of the tabernacle. Boys and girls, who designed the tabernacle? And you know what? You can all just shout this one out. Yeah, yeah God! Jesus! God in the Bible, well, and back in that time, God gave Moses specific instructions on how to build this tabernacle because he knew it was going to be a picture of Jesus who he was sending. And so everything in this tabernacle uh, symbolizes something, or in many cases symbolizes more than one thing. Um, and today we're just going to focus on a few of them. And even this week we only touched on a few, really. Um, but so, but the tabernacle was in the middle of the camp. All, everybody else camped around it. And that reminds us that God wants to be in the center of our life and that he wants to dwell with us. He wants to be with us. And so this tabernacle tells, shows how he makes that possible. So boys and girls, we have a fence around the tabernacle. What color is that fence? White. Very good. And now somebody can raise their hand and tell me, why is it white? Why, well, as why is it white? Yes, because Jesus makes us clean, or because Jesus is clean. Our big word for that was righteous. Or if you were a kindergartner, we learned that Jesus is perfect. Um, he never did anything wrong, but we know, of course, that we do do that we do um, things that are, that are not right. Um, and so, when we go into we go through the gate and into the tabernacle, um, we see how God has provided to make that clean. So, boys and girls, and you can see the picture back there. What is this? You can shout it out. It's not incense. Yeah, this is the altar. This is the altar of sacrifice. It was made of bronze. And somebody raise your hand to tell me what happened at this altar. We know there's two different altars in the tabernacle, but this is our one made of bronze. Sam, what happens? They burned animals. This is where sacrifices were made because... Jesus is righteous. God is righteous. He's perfect. He's holy. And because of that, without a sacrifice, people cannot come into the presence of God. Because we know that we are not perfect. We say things we should not say. 
We do things we do not do. We leave undone things that we know we should do. And sometimes we dwell or think about things that we know we shouldn't be thinking about. And we call those things sin. And God says that the wages of sin is death. Because of sin, someone or something must die. We should die, but God provided a substitute. So in the tabernacle, they sacrificed a lamb as a sin offering. But boys and girls, there was a perfect sacrifice who came later. Who is the perfect lamb of God? Caleb, who's our perfect lamb of God? Jesus. Jesus is our perfect lamb of God who gave his life, who shed his blood so that we would be able to dwell with God and come into his presence. Um, And one other thing, in this altar, we learn that the fire is always burning because God is always ready to forgive our sins. And that is good news. All right. Then after that, we had this one. Boys and girls, you can just shout this one out. What is this? It's the laver or the wash basin. And so, uh, son, now somebody raise your hand and tell me what happened here. Um, have I done? I haven't done it. Oh yeah, have I? What happened here? Yes. Uh huh. That's right. So when we were acting out, it was Aaron, but just the priests in general. After the sacrifice, then they would wash in the laver or the wash basin. They would be made clean. Um, and again, this is bronze. Bronze reminds us of the color bronze is for judgment. So we're seeing the judgment of sin here. Um, and in this case, the sacrifice has already been made. And now we're being clean. When we have accepted Christ's salvation, his gift, then the Bible becomes one way that God washes us clean or makes us more into his likeness. And he points out things that he would like to help us change in our lives. Um, So this is another picture of being cleansed. Well, after this, we get to go into the tabernacle. The tabernacle proper. And we know that it was just the priests who got to go in. Um, But because of God, God makes it possible for us to come into the tabernacle. So let's see. What's our next picture? Oh, I know. I was going to say one more thing about this wash basin. So most of the things in the tabernacle, it gives us dimensions. This does not, the laborer does not have dimensions given for it because God's cleansing power is measureless. There is no limit to his ability to make, some, to make us clean and turn and more like him. All right, so now we'll go into the tabernacle. And boys and girls, what is this? What was this one? Oh, shout it out. Okay, not a candle, though. It's a lamp. Candles are consumed and burning, and they have to be replaced. This light never goes out. It was a lampstand. So it is giving us light. And boys and girls, you can shout this one out too. What was it made of? Gold. gold. So everything, in, in, everything inside the tabernacle was made of gold. And gold reminds us of heaven um, and also of God's holiness. And our lampstand here reminds us that Jesus is light. So can somebody raise their hand and tell me, how is Jesus light? Or what does it mean for Jesus to be light? Ah, Skylar, go ahead, tell us. What does it mean for Jesus to be light? From the angels. Well, the angels, the angels give light. Okay, and Carter, you want to add to it? Yes. Uh huh. Yes. So Jesus is the light who gets rid of the darkness in our life. Jesus is truth. Jesus gives us direction. So sometimes we could. Sometimes it seems like we don't know what to do. We need direction. Well, Jesus, God can provide direction for us, um, and He also gives hope. 
when sometimes in darkness, in the dark, it, things may seem hopeless. Sometimes in the things going on in our life, things seem hopeless. But Jesus is the light, and he gives us hope, um, and he gives us joy, even when things should even when it seems like there's no reason to have it. Um, and then across the room from this lampstand was, let's see if we get the picture. I probably missed something. There we go. Uh, was, what, what's this? Shout it out. Showbread. Yeah, our table of showbread. And on it was the showbread that only the priests got to eat. Um, and this reminds us that Jesus is the bread of, of life. So who can raise their hand and tell me what it means for Jesus to be bread? Because that's kind of weird. Show bread. Jesus is our bread. What, what does it mean for Jesus to be bread? Do you remember? Yeah. Oh, never mind. Okay. I thought I saw your hand. Did you want to tell me, Edith, of faith? Okay. All right. I'll do this one. For Jesus to be so Bread, food, it fills us, it satisfies us, it nourishes us. And that's what Jesus does for us. Jesus meets our inner needs. He satisfies our deepest longings. And he, he gives us what we need. Oh no, that's coming untied. Uh, Connor, will you hold this for a minute? Uh, slight problem. Don't want to lose the baby. Thank you. All right. Um, Showbread, yes. And then at the very back of the holy place, we had this. Boys and girls, you can shout it out. What is this? Oh, is the altar of incense. The altar of incense. And boys and girls, what did the priest do here at the altar of incense? What? Um, Riley, what did they do? Yeah, they did. Yes, they burned incense and they prayed at the altar of incense. And this reminds us of two things. One, that we can pray. God tells us in the Bible that our prayers are like incense and they come up before him and they fill him with joy. God loves it when we pray to him. But it also reminds us that... Um, Jesus is praying for us. So it tells us, well, we know in the tabernacle, the priests were always busy. There was always another sacrifice to make. Um, another prayer to be made. You had to keep those lamps burning. But when Jesus died on the cross, and then he, the Bible tells us, then he comes into the presence of God, and he sits down, and he intercedes. He prays for us. Um, He's talking to God about us and our needs, um, and he is helping us. All right. Then after the altar of incense, then we get to go into the most holy place, the place where God's presence actually dwelt. And boys and girls, what is this piece of furniture? The Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant. And so this was in the most holy place. And boys and girls, what separated? Shh. Uh-oh. I'm losing us. I'm losing us. Can you hold on just a few more minutes? Okay. What separated the holy place from the most holy place? I don't have a picture of this one, but what separated the holy place from the most holy place? All the way down there. A curtain, we call it the veil. And Aaron, or the high priest, whoever was high priest, could only go in. How many, how often, how often did the high priest get to go in? Everybody just shout it out. Once a year. Once a year the high priest could only go into the most holy place, which is basically the throne room of God um, here on earth, um, once a year. And that was on the Day of Atonement. He would make a sacrifice down, out on the altar, and he would bring the blood through the curtain and into the most holy place and sprinkle it before the Ark of the Covenant. But we learned that when Jesus died on the cross, Jesus, our perfect sacrifice, died and he shed his blood for us. 
On that day when he died, at that moment when he died, God took that curtain, which was 6 to 12 inches thick, and it is thought that you could yoke two, you could put two yoke of oxen to them and have them pull against each other, and they could not tear this veil. But on the day that Jesus died, God took that veil and he tore it in half from top to bottom, saying, the way is now open. Jesus has provided the way that anyone can come into my very presence and dwell with me. And that is really the message of the tabernacle. God wants to dwell with you, and he has made it possible. He spreads his arms wide. He's, he's taken away the veil, um, or he's, he's put the veil so we can come into his very presence and dwell with him. Um, but that is only through the blood of Jesus Christ. So that is our message. Oh, so, um, so boys and girls, thank you for helping me. Um, we are going to do a slideshow. And so you can see this slideshow. I'm going to invite you to now go back and sit with your parents for watch, so you can see the slideshow.
we have been blessed by um, our high priest, Aaron, who has been um, reading our blessing, not only in English, but in Hebrew. And so I'd like to have him and his son, Eleazar, who actually has been blowing the shofar, which was their um, call to worship. They used it in all kinds of things in their worship. So if we could, the kids have been great about showing respect to our high priest. So if we could do that right now, then we'll be dismissed by um, uh, our blessing and the blowing of the shofar. All right. This is Aaron. So receive the blessing first in English and then in Hebrew. It comes from the great Sermon of Moses and Book of Numbers in the desert. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Yevar Hesha Adonai. The Yeshmeresha, Yaer Adonai, Panavelecha, the Yuchnecha, Yisa Adonai, Panavelecha, the Yasem Lecha, Shalom. Shalom. Thank you. And now Eliezer will blow the shofar. Okay.